Hi, how are you? I am Francesca and welcome to Felting with Wool. This, in, this is an introduction into wet felting. Some tips and recommendations that I'll show you throughout this video. I started experimenting with wool about 2004 and I would like to cover the following topics here with you. Those are merino wool, micron, roving and batting, what else do we need? Why does wool felt and where can I buy it? So let's start. So of, there's loads of sheep out there. We know many different sheep breeds, um, but this is the merino sheep and I use merino wool all the time. It's a beautiful quality wool. It's one of the finest wools that you can get. It gives a beautiful finish to any um, project that you're felting. It's very light. It's not scratching. It's, it's just a really, really beautiful material to work with. So I use merino wool all the time. The merino sheep uh, originates from Spain, um, but nowadays most of the merino wool, over 90% comes from Australia and New Zealand today. It's often also used in the fashion industry because the wool is such a good material to work with. Um, so, but how do we know which is a good merino wool and not that it's a bad one, but there is differentiations in the merino wool categories. And that brings me on to the next topic, which is microns. So micron or in other words, the diameter of wool is the measurement for each individual hair within a wool fleece. So this gives us a good indication um, how fine the wool is. So every breed has a different thickness in their wool. Merino wool starts as low as a 10 and goes up to about a 25. The wool I'm using has an 18. And in actual fact, I think I ever just came across a 17 micron because anything that's lower is usually used for the fashion industry. Um, also, the lower the number, the wool gets a lot more expensive. So that's just something you need to look out for when you're buying wool online, that you know the micron count. A higher number above 20 would really be ideal if you have a needle felting project that you want to do, because the wool is a lot, lot coarser. You may remember the woolly chompers that you used to wear as a child, and you know, you just never really felt that comfortable in it because they were, they were scratching your skin. And that was because that wool was a lot coarser than a merino wool because if you're wearing a merino wool 18 and lower it definitely won't scratch you because it's so fine so that's one thing you need if you're buying wool online look out for the micron count if it's not there just send them an email or ring them and ask them because if it's seri if it's a serious wool supplier he will they will let you know the micron count another thing you need to look out for when you're buying wool and also when you're working with wool is our next topic which is roving or batting so here i have a roving um this is 50 grams and in most shops that's how you get it 50 grams roving rolled up into a ball Roving is different to batting in the sense of all the fibers run in the one direction. So they're all running straight up. As I, you can see it here as I pull it. It's very fluffy. It's an 18 micron as well. What I can do with roving, I can actually mix in another color. So I put the grey one over this 
and because they're all running the same way I can separate them and pull them and layer them over each other and start to mix the colours just like that for doing this you can also buy a dog brush now if you really fancy you can buy the proper carding brush but the dog brush just works as well if you don't have a lot to do so you just run the fibers through the brush we see there's loads of little spikes that catch the wool and you just let the fibers run through it and you catch it again and you can mix it that way so that's the roving sometimes in shops it comes in bags like this one and I don't know if you can see it but you see the micron count is down here 18 so when you're buying wool as I said before um, buy an 18 or a 20 micron that gives you a really nice finish when you're buying in a roving now let's move on to the batting so here this I have a merino batting this one is quite big as you can see so the difference between the batting and the roving is simply in the batting the fibers are already mixed remember the roving they're all going in the one direction in the batting all the fibers are mixed can you see it so I can lay this down in my project straight away but I will go into more depth about laying down the wool in the roving and the batting when we do the actual project so that's the two differences in between roving and batting the quality is the very same it's an 18 micron merino wool it's just in the batting the fibers have already been mixed in the roving they're all going into the one direction that's the only difference so for wet felting we need three main ingredients and those are warm water doesn't have to be hot just warm so it's nice to touch soap and pure wool make sure you have pure wool because any artificial wool will not felt we also need some bubble wrap the size depends on the size of the project you're doing in felt and um, then a ha a handy will be as well a couple of towels especially if you don't have you know I have a room here it doesn't really matter if it gets wet but you might be doing this at home in your living room and you don't really want to ruin the table or the floor underneath so put a towel underneath the whole project that will soak up some of the excess water and then we also need a drawer lining again the drawer lining needs to be the size of your project that you're doing in felt drawer lining can also be net curtain or mosquito mesh it just needs to be something that lets water go through good to have is also a few more bowls and vinegar and i explain more why in the practical class why and how does wool felt let me explain this with this picture here we have four different types of wool here and then we have another natural fiber here and this one here the H this is polyester so it's a man-made product so the four wools here have scales those are scales here very well visible here on the coarse wool so those scales when they come in contact with warm water they open up and as we manipulate the wool by rubbing it and stroking it those scales they latch on with each other and they form what's called a felt those natural fibers here they have no scales so 
they cannot latch onto each other they just basically get wet and especially the polyester so if you think you have wool but you maybe have polyester wool the whole fiber is just a straight line like this there's no scales on it so you can manipulate this wool as long as you want it will not felt So now we have learned a good bit about the technical part of felting. Uh, the next lecture will be the practical side of it, where I'm going to show you how it's how it is actually done with a roving and also with a batting. The next couple of slides will be where you can buy wool, but of course there is loads more um, websites available online where you can purchase wool. So I hope to see you in the next lecture and that you enjoyed it so far. We need a mesh that lets water go through, some bubble wrap and a towel to catch excessive water. Some warm water and a bar of soap. I have a yellow roving here. And they come in big chunks and to make it easier for me to felt it I make smaller sections so gently pull the wool out and lay it on your mat and continue to pull small sections out very thinly and lay them down one after the other in a straight line. The second line then is just overlapping the first part we put down. So you can look at it nearly like a, a, a roof on a house, the way the tiles are. They're just overlapping so we get no gaps. So continue to do this till you have the size that you want. The next step then is to put down the wool crisscross over the first layer. And again, like you would put tiles on the roof, overlap the first ones. So you get no holes in your felt. And the nicer you do this in this part, the nicer your overall piece will be. It'll be more even. And then the third layer I am still at the first, the second layer there. The third layer again, crisscross over the last one. So you can add as many layers as you want. But the felt will get very thick the more layer you are adding. And it will be harder, not harder to felt, but it will, it will take much longer to felt. Obviously, because you have a lot more wool to work through. So I'm usually making about three to four layers. Just because most of the time I don't want my felt to be too thick. I can also add other colors if I want. That's entirely up to you. So I'm happy with that now. 
see that it's even enough and if you think you need a little bit more somewhere just add it on top then we secure everything with a second mesh this second mesh will prevent the wool from spreading out as it's being wetted with warm water this is really important when you have a nice design laid out so the water won't shift the wool and your design is still in place so gently push down the wool and spread the water underneath the plastic will help you um, doing that so I'm putting a bit of bubble wrap over it and spread the water underneath and I think it's still not wet there so let me see yeah you see it's still dry so I have to add more water to it you you be surprised how much water you will need and again I put a bit of plastic on it it just makes the plastic makes it easier to spread the water and then I add my soap and I add plenty of soap and I rub it soap helps with the felting process it's changing the PhD in the wool but it also makes it slippy and this will help with the rubbing part so you rub this now for about minute or two this rubbing now will start the felting process I can open it up see how it's coming together And with a pinch, I can check has it started to felt. But it needs a lot more. So I can turn this over. And do the other side as well. At this stage now, I can add a good bit more pressure. And I open it up every now and again as well to check it out. I can remove the first mesh and just drop it like that and you can see how it's nicely coming together now and then I remove it all together and keep rubbing it all the time the whole felting process from once we start adding the water till we're finished with it will take about five minutes and then again it depends um, how much pressure we put on what wool we're you're using and um, how thick you did the initial layout so I have all the mesh removed now you can lay it flat flat down and start rubbing it on the bubble wrap There's no harm done when it comes together like that. The bubble wrap is handy. It's great because it gives a nice bit of traction with the bubbles on it. If you just have a flat piece of plastic, it wouldn't felt as quick because it's an even service. That's why you see some people use bamboo mats as well. Just something that has a bit of a structure underneath. It just helps you with the felting process that it's a bit quicker. You can take it up in your hand. but Just make sure that you open it up every now and again as well. Because otherwise you might just end up with a ball rather than a flat piece. So this whole process from start to finish takes about five minutes. 
It really depends how quick you work, how much pressure you put on, how much wool you're using, the quality of the wool and so forth. And as you're doing a few pieces, you're also probably will develop your own style of felting because there's no rules to it except that you have to have warm water and soap and good quality wool. So you can see it has become much smaller than what we laid out at the beginning of. I am happy now and I have a bit of water left over and I just dunk it in and wash it a bit out. But I'm going to go to a tap now and wash it out under running water. Warm or cold doesn't really make any difference, but make sure there's no water. There's no soap left, not water. There's no soap left in the piece. In this bucket with some water, we add a dash of vinegar. This will neutralize any soap that may be left in the felt and it also helps to keep the, the colors vibrant in the felt. Give it a good rinse out, squash out the rest of the water and then if you don't use it immediately, let it dry well on a radiator or just somewhere it can dry basically. So now you're done. So before we start, we check that we have everything. We need wool batting, warm water, towel, two sheets of bubble wrap, two non-slip mats and a bar of soap. Any soap, it doesn't matter what brand you're using. The first video I used a roving top merino wool. This time I'm using a batting merino wool. The quality is the very same. They're both an 18 micron. The difference with the batting is the fibers run in all different directions. So this makes the layout for your actual felting piece a little bit easier because you do not have to separate it and lay it down as I showed you in the first video. So with a batting, we can basically just take off layers depending how thick we want it. So if I want it very thin, I can take off very thin layers and just put them down on my table. So as you can see, I'm already almost finished. I'm just giving a few um, touches here with different colors to give it a bit of a design. So I'm already finished now to put the second um, non-slip mat over it so the design will stay in place when I'm going to add the warm water to it. So we thoroughly wet this again. We, it's using a lot of water. Make sure it's really all well wet. Then put over your second bubble wrap it just helps you. You can see how the water spreads out from underneath the bubble wrap. So it's a little bit easier to wet the whole piece. Add some more where it's needed. And then start again with putting your soap on it to make it all slippy and change the PHD of the wool. So your wool now will start to felt. Make sure you have enough water on it. So you can actually, you can never have enough water on it. So don't be worrying if you think you have too much water on it. That really does have, has no influence on the whole felting process. In fact, it's probably easier if you have more water than not enough water. So gently rub all this again as we did with the first piece I showed you with the roving. It's the very same process from now on. So we we felt the first um, the first bit there with the red lining. And then we're gonna flip it over and we felt again the blue lining. So the 
the front first, then flip it over to the back. So we rub this for approximately about one minute on both sides. Then again, remove your first non-slip liner and you can felt it without it for a while. So you get a nice feel how it's felting together. Then just lift it up and turn it around and do the other side. You really only need the non-slip mats till you feel it's coming really nicely together and you don't feel it's well basically falling apart if you remove the non-slip mat. So whenever you feel comfortable enough that you feel well this is well well starting to felt now you can you can remove the lining and just leave it on your bubble wrap and work it on your bubble wrap. The whole process again with the batting takes about five to ten minutes depending on the size that you do, the thickness that you do and the quality of wool that you're using. So it's time wise the same as the roving wool. When I'm happy with the consistency of the felt I then wash out the soap under a running cold water tap and I put it into the bucket with a drop of vinegar in it to wash out any soap that may be left in it. And the vinegar also helps again to keep the color of the walls vibrant. This piece of merino felt now is ready for whatever else I want to use it. The two felts are ready now. We have <clears throat> the yellow on the left side and the pink on the right side. So the yellow was the, um, the roving and the pink was the batting. So there's really, there's no difference in the overall finished product. It's just literally the layout when we are start with the felting process that we have a different layout with the wool. So keep that in mind when you're buying wool. Are you buying a roving or are you buying a batting? So till next time and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.